Fry First Television here, everyone, and it's one of my favourite films showing today, The Samurai. Uh, saw it um, in Berlin, absolutely loved it, managed to get it for Fright Fest then. Since then, I've met Till Kleiner, the director, and now his star, Pip Bukowski. So let's talk about The Samurai. Mm -hmm. um, Germany does not have a real tradition of horror. Do you, it is a horror film, mm -hmm. so how did you get the money for this, and was it a difficult proposition? Uh... I guess it was. I, I, I think there is some sort of... I mean, there is a German horror tradition, like when you go back to the 20s and 30s... There, well, the, Mark of the Devil is yeah. about the one that everyone remembers. So, so but... but uh, or I mean, or even you have people like Jörg Butgerait, who's here as well. There's, there have always been people working on the fringes, like like keeping something up or alive, but uh, it's not... It's not like you can like something you can trace back through 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 the decades, like in the UK, for example. Um, so I found it very difficult. I think the difficult is not that the people are not open to it, like the people who fund things, but they just don't know much about it. So, and and words like horror to them are like uh, ooh an ugly proposition. So you, you you tend to sort of write all these texts to them where you sort of explain to them why it's a worthy endeavor why why horror can be so much more than like uh, like a video nasty or even a video nasty is great but you you always sort of have to sort of you have to use the tools of cultural criticism to sort of make them uh, make them like it but you you cannot just you cannot take for granted that they will know that this is a genre that actually has a tradition. I mean, even a literary, literary tradition in Germany, like like German Romanticism with the stories of E.T.A. Hoffman or whatnot. I mean, it, it, there's a huge tradition, actually, in grim fairy tales. But it, for some reason, I think, since World War II, I don't know if there's some weird association going on, like as if uh, the fantastic and the occult, and I, I don't know what, has some, some weird sort of bad connection to whatever happened there. I don't know, but uh, since then, it, it just has become difficult to work in the less rational <laughs> realms of, of fiction, I guess. What was the starting point for this? What, did you just have an image? Did you have an idea? And you just thought, let's run with this? And... Yeah, that, that's how it usually works. Like, uh, there's one central image, like... Uh, some, like a lucid daydream or some, some, some sort of dream image, whatever. It sounds very cliche, but that's how it is. And then from that point on, you start to, uh, to explore, okay, what, what is this? Like an archaeologist finding a shard, you know, oh, it's a beautiful shard. Let's see, uh, let's see if we can reconnect the shards to get the vase. Um, and uh, it was when I was going by train to Berlin from the Baltic Sea. Uh, I, you pass by train, you pass all these nice little villages, uh, by the track bed and, and the track bed is elevated so the villages are down below and they look almost like miniatures and uh, huddled together and all the shutters down it was at dusk and the forests around them and it almost looked as if they were huddling together as if bracing themselves against some perceived threat coming out of those forests and that was when this first image just popped into my mind of this lean character wearing a dress wielding a katana and sort of rattling the katana against the fences all alone roaming those empty streets and uh, and it sort of intrigued me, this sort of uh, image, and, and so then you start to wonder, okay, why is he there, what's he doing there, who is he coming for, and uh, so it's like that. It's not like there's a theme in the beginning that you're trying to instill, or an agenda, or a message. It's rather that you have this first image, and then you're trying to, you have the dream first, and then you're trying to analyze it, and that's the process of writing the screenplay and, and making the film. Uh, Pitch, you've had a relationship with, you know, Till for a while, and you're in the short films. Uh, cowboy. I mean, so when did you get involved in this? Did he tell you pretty early on that you were going to be in it and this is what it was about? Yeah, sure. I was involved in like the casting pretty early and um, we talked about the character before. And it's like, a, it's like we have a friend, uh, uh, Linus de Pauli, who mm -hmm. did also um, uh, The Boy Wouldn't Kill or Dr. Ketel. And, um, and it's like Dr. Ketel is like Linus feature film and it's like the uh, basically like the, the short film uh, multiplied by 10 and Samurai is the multiplied like Cowboy multiplied by 10 basically just like and Cowboy is like the um, the origin movie I don't know it's like the uh, in, 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 in Udero or something in Udero yeah, so some, it's, it's sort of some, some sense, the yeah. seed yeah. I, th I remember pretty early on we for example we did um, when it was about uh, finding ways to convince people that this might actually work would be something worthwhile. Like a year before shooting, we did, uh, we did this sort of photo shoot where, we would just, mm -hmm. just put, uh, he, where he, he would put on dresses and we would borrow a sword and just have him sort of uh, strike poses just in order to get a feeling uh, of... So, so, so it, it, was, it was... Like we used this very nice image that we shot with a Lomo 
uh, of you looking like really really scary and mad into the camera. So so he was uh, involved from mm -hmm. from the get go. Yeah. And, and it's like the same cameraman and the, like uh, most of the team is the same as in Cowboy and. Um, where it's basically all the family, you know, each other for a long time. Sure. So no trepidation that you knew you were going to be in a dress all the way through the movie? Yes, I, I knew, uh, I didn't know it was, it was going to be that hard, uh, long draining uh, naked night shoots, but it's, uh, and I didn't know it's, uh, it would be so hard to, to do the explicit nude scenes, but it's, um, but you know, Cowboy, for example, was basically my, my first, real movie like the first uh, I did a couple of TV productions before that and Cowboy was like the first um, um, movie to be taken seriously that I did and um, and I had to like be naked in front of 50 people in some field and and I guess he also he already knew that I was going to be able to do that because <laughs> really? I, I you know I you was, want uh, you secretly you want to do that that's, that's, how I, that's how I need to see it because otherwise I would feel like someone <laughs> pushing you to so uh, we we have like uh, developed a mutual trust to uh, mm -hmm. to do these uh, these nude scenes whatever and um, yeah mm -hmm. the taste is like I mean the taste for movies like that independent movies like that which are not shot very often in Germany is is uh, mutual and that's why it was clear that I was going to do it. Even though it's hard to, to, to get there at times, you know, it's like I, I, I feel like I torture I torture you sometimes maybe because like like with the wig that came in pretty yeah, late, you know. Because he didn't want to have like look, he didn't want me to look exactly like a cowboy, that's why I had to carry the wig. Uh, like no, the there, there, is a, there, is a, there is even a rational reason for it because from behind it should be, it should be possible course, that yeah. you would Ex at least resemble a woman. I mean, you have the shoulders and everything, so it's kind of hard. But uh, mm -hmm. yeah, but uh, and that came pretty late. And I think it's um, it's just it can be distracting. Just like the dress and having this wig, it can sort of distract from this feeling of that's actually me. But I don't know. Well, if you play like an unpredictable character, you know, it's uh, it's. It's it's uh, you play like this uh, this uncontrollable character, but you're you have to be controlled by a director somehow, and that really uh, is a problem. What well, has <laughs> been a problem sometimes, you know, because uh, you're supposed to be uh, feel very confident in the dress and everything, and then uh, somebody uh, makes you wear a wig, you know, which you which makes you look completely different, and. It, I know that's uh, that it makes it look completely astonishing it, as well. It's, yeah, it's but it's but it's uh, it's hard to like uh, keep up oh. the. Did you ever worry about calling it the samurai? Because I mean, it, in a way, people people a lot of people have asked me at this yeah. weekend, going, "Well, what is it?" I mean, you know, what a, you know, I go, "Well, actually, it's a German slasher movie yeah. with an undercurrent." But you've really, it's almost like they're expecting another sort of film. Yeah, I. I didn't think that much about it. I have to say, it's it's basically the same with Cowboy. Uh, because the samurai justice cowboy is is the is the name I refer like the antagonist in both films. It's it's the it's the it's the Monica I refer to them as in the screenplay. Right. It's it's never they are never called that in the film. Like there's, there's never a moment where where Oliver Schatz in Cowboy calls him oh he's the cowboy or, or or the samurai likewise here. But it's just because they are these sort of mythical creatures that are not quite real or not quite from this world so if I would give them a name like Hans or whatever it would sort of for me even writing it it would lose all, all, all mystery uh, so so I, I give them those names and then I feel okay well since it's all about those and about our hero sort of trying to uh, to sort of uh, <laughs> get a grip of them it's only fair to call the movies that it's mm -hmm. so it's, it's like that so I and then I realized okay well of course, there are expectations <laughs> that come with a samurai film, or even like there's Le Samurai by uh, by, mm -hmm. by Neville, and so 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 it's but ours is Dare Samurai. So I, I actually even insist on that the official title is not This Samurai but Dare Samurai, just to make clear that it's you know it's a German one. <laughs> it's a German one. Mm -hmm. I don't know. I mean, I mean, I think you can you can sort of find it's funny because I think he's especially his character is not not really a samurai. At all, I mean, he has like a sword, but funny character somehow looks like a samurai, bear, like like the cowboy yeah. somehow reminds you of something like a cowboy, but it's but, but like in in terms of he he doesn't have that sort of honor code or the code of a master he needs to follow or something. I think it, it much rather fits, and and in that way it even fits the film still. Uh, it fits uh, Jakob, who is our main character, uh, who has this sense of duty 
towards uh, towards this village and towards all the people there uh, that are sort of uh, very far away or alienated from his actual impulses and urges. Mm -hmm. So I think he is much more of a samurai in a way. Than yeah, because for quite some time in the movie, and a lot of people have said this to me, you've already seen it, they say, you know, that you actually think that you're just alter ego. It's like, you know, Michael Dick's character in you is like, you mm -hmm. know, you could, is it really him, like, projecting himself? But of course, then there's that bit where you're actually in frame together, so it yeah. can't be. So it's a case of you do play with that. Was that... It's, it, I mean, it's, it's, I think, for me, the two are not mutually exclusive, if you know what I mean. It's like, in, like, in, like again, in the E.T.A. Hoffman stories of German romanticism, you have a lot of doppelganger stories, mm -hmm. like a man all of a sudden on a party or somewhere meeting a man who looks just like him or is very similar to him but is doing all the things uh, and, uh, and saying all the things that he would never dare to say or something, you know? And, and, and of course, in, in terms of the fiction, this character only exists for, 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 for our protagonist or like in The Hitcher when, 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 when Rutger Hauer <laughs> all of a sudden appears like uh, out, of, out of the mist or out, out, of, out of the, you know? Uh, he's. Uh, I think he's. He's basically there uh, as a projection and the rites of passage for our for our protagonist. But uh, but that doesn't mean he's not real it, within the within the world we have created. It's. Mm. I, I like. I love that about horror fiction that things can become real, incarnate, like in the flesh. You know, like like of course the monsters all relate to to like in a turmoil and struggle of the protagonists, but that doesn't mean that they are less real. So at the Neuchâtel q &A, you remember that some guy said that he thought it was very fam similar in ways to the Company of the Wolves. Mm -hmm. You actually said yes, you'd heard that before. So yeah. you do see it in sort of like fairy tale terms. You've got yeah. the wolf imagery, you've got, you know, the house in the woods almost yes. and that sort of thing. Yeah, again that's what I like about what what I just said about this that you 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 sort of in fairy tales you're sort of entering this uh, this stage, this like dreamscape where where like you sort of everyday psychological whatever issues get uh, get all of a sudden can be resolved in a very physical way like you have the children who in order to grow up have to be separated from their parents have to go in the woods mm -hmm. have to have their trials and tribulations there and then like seven years later or whatever you know return as as, as this changed person and, and I, I sort of love I don't want to overanalyze it but that's that's the that's the thing I like about it that you don't need to do like psychobabble or something you can just use these sorts of situations and images to to explore those uh, those, I mean, those Pitt, transformations from a, from a practical point of view was the sword hard did you have to have sword lessons and was it sharp i mean was it, or did you actually blunt the edges so nothing was going to go wrong no, I've, I've i've had lessons i, I took a uh, class for about three weeks or something but it wasn't really necessary because since there's only one scene in right. which uh, it happens even though that was um, kind of hard to choreograph, uh, and we had like uh, Dave Stataski, uh, which does on Bach movies, I guess, and we really uh, I think he works. Yeah, he really does. Movies, yeah. And he um, he taught me a couple of cool moves I could uh, I could learn within that short time, but um, I don't know. I need to be fit for the night shoots and be fast or whatever, but. And handling the sword with some confidence, but it's uh, it wasn't really necessary. I, th I think the sword. Uh, I mean, we had we had three swords. Uh, two of them were blunt, and one was sharp yeah. for when we would need it. I don't even know if we actually when, like when, when, when like when, when he when, when he destroy the when he destroys like the, the when 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 he when he when he hacks away at the in this front yard, you know, when he hacks away mm -hmm. at the bushes and everything. So it needs to be sharp in order to actually do something. So that was always a very. Hey, there even was this thing when you when you hacked away at this, and all of a sudden water came out of the of the of the ground. You know, you don't remember that. It was that night in the in the in the in the in the, in the front yard. He was hacking away, and all of a sudden, from where he was hacking, there was water. Uh, ah, yeah, but it so it, so it was like it was like oh no, he has hit a water main or something. <laughs> yeah. Oh no, how are we gonna yeah, sure. explain that to uh, the people? But it was just the sprinklers <laughs> that went on at a certain time, and they didn't warn us. But for 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 for, for a really hard moment, we were like, oh no, how will our insurance ever? be able to, mm. to pay for that. Okay. Um, and, and yeah, apart from that, and even for the one thing where he actually swings the sword and he's really fast, it's, it's made out of plastic because it would just be too heavy yeah. for, for him yeah. to, to, to move that fast. But. Um, that is gory. I mean, you know, they did take a lot of... Well, yeah, that is. I, mean, I, hope, I, I, hope, I sure hope so. I mean, yeah, yeah, I mean, so, you know, you're always going to do that. And were you always going to make it as sexually explicit as it was too? Was it always going to have 
the, the scene that yes. we know about. I, 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 I think so, yeah. I don't think I, there has ever been an iteration of the, of the whole treatment or whatever where... Oh, was there? I mean, I think there was one very first, a very first uh, one that ended basically with our protagonist, uh, Jakob, sort of hunting down, trying to figure him out, and him getting shot in the morning by the police before any answer or any resolution could be reached. Mm. I think that was like one, the, the, the very first draft that, that didn't have that. But once it was clear that this can't be the end or that, that there needs to be some sort of resolution for those, it was also clear that it had to go there. Yeah. Okay. So. And I mean, you, you, I think maybe you told me you filmed um, in, in a, what, what village did you film in? Where, where was that? It's several villages. It's, oh. it's, it's, a, it's an area north of Berlin where my grandfather used to live when he still lived. Oh, so you were familiar with the, the yes, area? Yes, sort of. I mean, I'm, I'm, not, I'm from Berlin, I'm from the city, so uh, it's like I always have a... The strange there, there's the strangeness of, of the countryside uh, to me always mm. there's like a like fascination or like a, an urge to go there I don't know like like many city people have this like and you can see it in Cabo as well this sort of fantasy that that all of a sudden all your problems will be solved once you are in this like open environment and whatnot uh, but also the knowledge the secret knowledge me being a, a skeptic that uh, that there's actually something much worse waiting for you there as well and and I think Many of my films take place in the countryside, and they are all about this, about this sort of uh, contradiction. I, I must ask, Peter, I must ask you about Michael Dix. Is it, am I saying his name right? Michel. 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 Michel Dix. 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 <laughs> I mean, I mean, your scenes with him. I mean, you got on well. I'm assuming it was all fine. You did. What did you have to sort of work at anything out or? <laughs> Say nice things. Oh, he's a nice guy. Was oh. uh, was fine because because uh, he's French then, is he? <laughs> no. oh. He's from Hamburg. It's just I, I even I even think that he his name should be should be pronounced Michel because I think that's oh, how it's yeah. written. But uh, he keeps yeah, he, he keeps he, like he keeps that. telling me that it's uh, that's pronounced Michel. So I okay. who am I to argue? So it was funny because uh, till made me you know wear the wig and uh, he uh, Michel had to have this little. This little red mustache, <laughs> and when true. we had when we were shooting the party scene, nobody really ever asked me about the dress, but everybody asked him about his ugly ass beard. <laughs> and um, it was it, uh, he was. Uh, it's so funny because he's he's because he has this very boyish and innocent mm -hmm. looks, and so and so growing a beard, he doesn't really grow a beard. If he tries, it looks sort of. Uh, <laughs> It looks sort of uh, pathetic, you know what I mean. And I, I, but I sort of like this because he, he is this guy who is trying, who has carved his niche within a community, and who is trying to be someone of some authority. So of course he would try to sort of have that in order to no, build some sort of. A, and, uh, and I think it was very endearing and very nice. It actually, uh, Philip Lahm was my was my uh, was my inspiration for that. Who's a, who's a football player again? Football. Oh no! <laughs> <laughs> Just who's, a German, right who's a German football player? <laughs> And he has that as well because he's the captain of the national team, and I feel like. But he also is is is, is cursed by these boyish looks, and so he. I feel like he tries very hard right. to. Uh, I think in a lot of ways, you know, besides the whole uh, me being naked at night times uh, and was cold and everything, it was maybe probably it was harder for Michelle to to. Uh, to play the character because I would, you know, always um, just do some crazy stuff and, you know, uh, you would always have something cool to do, yeah, <laughs> something cool to do using the sword or whatever or having the cool, dropping the cool lines and he's always following me around and is trying to uh, <laughs> keep up, keep, keep up the diversity of his acting and, and that that was um, that was his challenge and but mm. we did it all together and yes, I think so. Was, um, that's 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 the hard thing because um, you have. Uh, Usually you'd expect a hero in a film to be very proactive and very very aware of his agency, you know? Whereas this is about a very conflicted and troubled character who is not really aware of his own secret agenda. So it makes it very hard for him to, to you know, to fulfill some sort of agency. And, and, uh, but I wanted it that way, but it, 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 it's, it's a bit harder to construct then so in order to keep the audience interested as well. Because we're so used to having these, like, Macho men knowing what they do. That uh, I hope it works. I think I, I love yeah, watching. I, I mean, I love I've seen it three times now, yes. and I love it. I mean, I just think it really works every time. Yeah. And it was clear that I, that I couldn't do anything wrong because you know, since it's such an iconic character, it was clear the the movie wouldn't work if you know if the if the the character wouldn't be uh, you know as as mysterious or iconic. Oh, sure. And and he uh, yeah he he doesn't have these he's. 
basically only watching me and running. How did you? Try but, 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 at this, but at the same time, since since I think, uh, as you said before, his character sort of refers very directly to to Jakob's own uh, secret uh, mm -hmm. urges and, uh, and agendas. Uh, I think it makes if you if you actually question. If you if you start to question Jakob's uh, Jakob's way of doing things within that night, with him being actually the policeman who who is supposed to stop this guy, I think you you, you can see a quite crazy character actually. That's the thing, but he's not aware of it. It's it's a very mm. I, I, I think so the movie I think, does I, that. I think but... I think the thing is Jakob is actually the more interesting character, <laughs> but I guess uh, the samurai is the one that that's I, I know he mm. gets all the great lines. Did, did you have a good choice of dress? I mean, could you choose the dress? When, <laughs> I know this sounds really boring, but I assume no, no, this is it's actually not. quite important. You don't just go into a chain store and say, I'm just going to wear this one. It has to have a certain feel and look. And you can... No, he had, he had uh, gone to. He no, had, no, you, you, uh, it was tailored especially for him, so yeah, it's, not, it's, it's not something I was... Oh, no, you just didn't go into like a... No, no, no. No, because my shoulders, you know, there to have... It's not just a girl's dress. You, you had to like... Uh, I don't know. It's uh, you. You actually had uh, like you. You wanted a very special dress. You know, for example, like a girl's dress. It starts more up here, like you right. know the yeah, yeah. called the rope. Yes, it starts, exactly. It starts over here, and, and, and this and, one but it he would, had starts. Uh, I don't know. Right, right that's right. right. A girl's right. dress would never have the t the tie, the the waist. All well, right. Uh, mm -hmm. they, they would always be higher, but it made him look so pregnant and uncool <laughs> that we that we just that we just kept lowering the the waistline, which is something you would not have in an actual woman's dress. So okay. it was. So it was tailored specifically to look like a woman's dress, but to sort of uh, uh, to to get us the best of his particular frame, so uh, of his particular silhouette. So uh, and it was uh, like wearing several things be beyond that dress, uh, like uh, beneath the the dress, uh, like to keep me warm and stuff, which was really horrible. It was yeah. it was not like a diving suit. And it was basically and it was uh, like uh, barefooted most of the time, and you know all the running scenes that I don't know. It's uh, as I said. It was it was hard to do. It looks easy, but it's, uh, well, no, it's cold. It was cold. You can tell all the time. You it's can tell. <laughs> right. This is last question about the music because I love the yeah. music. Where, where, which one particular? The song in the end or everything? Everything. Okay. I, mean, I love the good. disco scene. I, you yeah. know, the whole, I think that's so fab. In fact, Neuchatel ruined that. I think because they didn't have this the sound very well, 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 here. It'll be great. <laughs> okay, it'll be okay, blasting okay, it out. Right. But I mean, no, I, I think the music's great. So. Okay, well, thank you. I, will, I, I can't say much about that apart from I will, I will, I will uh, forward it to, to the composer who's really who's a good friend, Conrad. Uh, and I have been working with him on some short films and, and this now. And he's, he's fantastic. He's a, I, I always say that he's also the, he's also the two keyboarder for the Pudis, but you don't know the Pudis, I guess. No. The Pudis is a, an East German, a very old, like the, the Rolling Stones of East Germany. And, and, the Rolling Stones of East Germany. Yeah, Conrad uh, is there. How did we miss that? And, and Conrad is their tour keyboarder. Uh, <laughs> but he's also a film composer, and he's a really good film composer. And, uh, and I like about him that he, he lets me lets me in on the process because some composers they like to you know do yeah. that but I, I, I like to be hands on and I, I love music and I love yeah, sort yeah. of making I love the process of making music so I find it very gracious of him to, to let me give that much input or even like you no, know, I love it. play around with his cuts so, so. So. Is the relationship going to continue? Are you going to be working with this guy again? I mean or never again <laughs> after what he put you through on this one? It's up to him. <laughs> I would, but I don't know about him. I think, well, weren't, you, weren't you going to give up acting altogether, like, after the shoot? Yeah, yeah. <laughs> we, uh, the, yeah. The, you know, since nobody really cares about independent movies, the infrastructure on the set was, uh, I mean, you know, there was no money. It was hard. It was long. Um, don't talk that. <laughs> we, uh, yeah, we don't want that no more. <laughs> we, want a, we, want, we want more comfort on the set. Let's speak for yourself. Speak for yourself. <laughs> well, listen, I'm dying to know what the audience is going to make of it. I, yeah. I mean, they're all really, really wild up to see it. And so, <laughs> yeah. let's, let's thanks, see for, what... thanks for that. No, hey, I'm your biggest ambassador. I know, it's great. Everybody I happens. always like to keep the uh, expectations yeah, really low. You know, so that, that's always a pleasant surprise. A pleasant surprise, <laughs> yeah, but people are looking forward to it. Okay. Okay. Well, well, let's so, let's see how it's all going to go later yes. on. Back. Okay. Guys, Till, Pitt, thank you so much. Thank you. Thank, thank you for having us. Okay.